Thanks, Dave. Uh, and good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. Interestingly, um, our senior team yesterday afternoon was involved in a uh, planning and foresight session, and we were being challenged by the uh, people we were working with to uh, uh, outline our core beliefs around which we structured what we think is our value proposition uh, about um, uh, uh, educating career-ready uh, graduates and working on uh, creative infrastructures and technologies for smarter communities. And uh, the discussion, in a, in a sense, feeds uh, uh, directly into our involvement and our engagement uh, in this conference. Uh, um, the uh, values that we laid out, the beliefs we laid out, is that communities must continuously innovate, regions must continuously innovate, and become smarter in order to adapt to a world that's uh, changing at a logarithmic pace. Uh, as we grow and as we adapt, we have to be careful uh, to recognize that there are downsides to that and mitigate the downsides and ensure uh, social uh, inclusiveness. Uh, our students need to be prepared to make a running start when they enter the workforce. And an entrepreneurial culture is essential to do the work that we have to do as an organization uh, to have the impact we, de uh, we desire. And we need to integrate our work into the community, into our uh, economic sectors, uh, and uh, into our uh, social and uh, community services. So our participation in this conference today is uh, uh, based on the notion that we are a part and parcel of Durham Region, and we are an integral part of the uh, growth and development and the economic and social future uh, of this region. This time last year, this day last year, uh, I was sitting on another panel uh, on the role of regional economic development strategies in the resurgence of advanced manufacturing in North America. The panel was in Mexico City. It was a part of a workshop uh, that was sponsored by the Brookings Institute and uh, Chase Manhattan. It was in Mexico City uh, because Mexico City is on the other end of trading and supply chains that run all the way from Canada uh, through the United States into Mexico and have grown and strengthened as a result of NAFTA. NAFTA provided the conditions under which Canadian business grew, competed, and met the challenge of open borders and international trading arrangements. Trading arrangements that are now being extended across, across the globe and across the world as a result of uh, uh, the federal government's focus on free trade arrangements in Europe, in uh, Latin American countries, and in Asia. Oshawa is blessed geographically in terms of where it fits on key trading routes and key manufacturing supply chains in auto, in, uh, and when I say Oshawa, I mean Durham region as well. I was looking at Mayor Henry and uh, uh, his energy channeled uh, to me. <laughs> that, that's, that's good. Um, Durham region is blessed uh, with its location uh, on the supply chains, uh, auto, uh, aerospace, agri-food products, energy uh, services. Uh, we have a cluster of economic activities that's rich. We have uh, community and regional infrastructure from energy producers through uh, uh, ports and transportation routes that support economic activities. And we have growing post-secondary institutions that not only produce graduates that are career ready, but also engage in innovation and economic and entrepreneurial activities. We have all of the assets in Durham region that we need to grow and support uh, our trading opportunities and grow and support economic development, which in turn 
will support community development and enhancements in the already tremendous quality of life that we have here. With sessions like this are critically important to discuss the synergies we can uh, achieve within economic sectors and across e economic sectors. And I want to do a blatant infomercial in a moment in talking about synergies. There are in Oshawa and Whitby three active post-secondary institutions, Trent University, Durham College, and the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. Put them side by side and they educate over 20,000 full-time students in a range of programs from arts and science through to uh, uh, energy systems and engineering, from trades uh, through to uh, business and uh, digital media. Put them together and they represent a workforce that's as large as GM's workforce. Put them together and build pathways between those institutions which is happening and is being, and is being planned. And you have a, a large post-secondary complex that can react quickly and positively in engaging with and meeting with community needs. Put them together and they can and have developed a joint building proposal that if it's accepted in the government's, provincial government's recent call for uh, infrastructure proposals can, will accommodate over 6,000 new full-time students. 6,000 new full-time students uh, in and of itself increases economic activity in the region and has spin-offs. It will increase employment in the region and it will increase the connection between our graduates and the growth and development of your businesses, of your marketing activities, and uh, of your uh, innovative products. Uh, we're happy to be part of this session. This session is critically important in defining our regional strengths, our regional opportunities, and our regional impact in global markets. And uh, uh, it's part and parcel of what we do do and need to do continuously to be on the leading edge as the world changes and as the world provides us with new opportunities for growth and wealth and prosperity. Which is a nice way to segue into my introduction uh, to our keynote speaker. We, the conference organizers have asked the Honorable Chris Alexander, Minister of Citizen and Immigration, to open the conference. Minister Alexander, and we see him almost nightly uh, these uh, days on uh, TV, uh, keeps him uh, close to uh, home and close to our hearts, uh, has worked for 18 years as a member of the Canadian Foreign Service. His first posting was at the Canadian Embassy in Russia, and by 2003, he became Canada's first resident, resident ambassador in Kabul, Afghanistan. And Kabul, Afghanistan in 2003, as we all know, was a, one of the tough places in the world uh, to be. Between 2005 and 2009, he served as Deputy Special Representative of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. Chris was first elected to the House of Commons in 2011, representing Ajax Pickering, and was named Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Defence uh, on July 15, 2013. And, uh, uh, sorry, Minister of Defence, and on July 15, 2013, he became the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. I'd like to ask you to refer to our speaker's package for his more detailed biography. And, uh, a warm welcome to uh, Minister Chris Alexander. Thank you.